The internet has been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, invention of the last 50 years or so. It managed to tear down the barriers between every single country and every single language in the whole wide world. The fact that my videos are able to reach people throughout the entire world, and I'm literally just sitting here in my chair, I did not move an inch, is enough proof of the power of this invention. Biologically speaking, I doubt that people that exist today are smarter than people in the previous generations. However, due to the effects of industrialization and the improvement of the education system, and of course, the internet in this generation, we have unprecedented access to information that was never seen before by any of the generations that have come before us combined. Again, from the comfort of my home or even during transportation, I can view the history of humanity. I can see how people of other cultures in different countries live. I can read the theory of relativity by Einstein, and if I didn't understand it, I can just go on YouTube and search for someone who explains it in a simple manner. I don't have a telescope at home and I'm not able to read the stars properly. However, thanks again to the internet, I'm able to see what the NASA scientists have discovered. The power of knowledge is in the palm of your hands. If you have been living in the Middle Ages with a phone that has access to the internet and all the information that exists now, you would have been hailed as an omniscient god. Or burnt as a witch, depends on where you go and when. However, the unfortunate fact is the internet has become a new type of WMD, able to spread hatred and misinformation destroying cultures and destroying countries and forming radical groups sorry for the long-winded introduction but it was needed for this video let me tell you the story of bob this is bob on the screen bob likes to watch hentai this is his guilty pleasure decades ago when bob was at school people made fun of him he was vilified and known as hentai bob Nobody else knew or understood how sexy this hentai was to him. Each night, he'd open his laptop and watch a video and wank it off. Then came along the internet and social media. Suddenly, Bob found his people. He found others who knew the lure of sexy hentai. They talked freely and he was relieved to find others like him. They exchanged series, swapped locations, met up with each other competed over which waifu is the hottest, and Bob was happy. Over the years, new members have joined the group, and the network grew bigger. And well, Bob didn't give a shit to talk to any other people. Every day, his entire interaction was with people like him. People that thought he was normal. Some days, they might not mention hentai at all, since, according to the group, it was normal. Years pass, and the group gets even more members, and Bob forgot that he was weird. After all, there are now hundreds of active people in this little group, each with their own kings and subgroups, and thousands of current and potential members. Then one day, Bob forgets himself in the middle of a train. He whips out his dick and starts watching hentai. Twitter picks up on it, the news pick up on it, his bemusement is left over and Bob doesn't understand why everyone is so interested by what he's doing. Everyone he's ever spoken to for years on end has been of the same mindset and he's completely cemented his feelings that he's perfectly normal but now he's back to being called hentai bob once more the moral of the story is don't give your entire life to online communities who reinforce what you already believe seek out meaningful interactions and get constantly exposed to fresh perspectives even if you don't always agree with them echo chambers can be useful at times and certainly comforting However, they will irreparably warp your brain if you spend too much time inside of them. Whenever you want to move from one place to another, you get told that people over there don't know how to change a tire. They don't know how to live. All they do is eat sushi and drink coffee. They push you back in the comfort zone, into the comfort lie that you have been living throughout your entire life. They block you from learning and acquiring new skills, ideas that you would have never been exposed to if you'd stayed back at home. And thanks to the internet, you don't even need to leave home. All you need to do is just Google something that contradicts one of your current beliefs. I'd like you to try that one time, just once today. Perhaps you think Earth is flat. Perhaps you think that science doesn't make sense. Perhaps you think NASA lies. Just Google something. Google that fact and see the research. Maybe you get convinced. Maybe you don't. What's the worst that can happen? 
check out what the community that opposes your current beliefs thinks. Maybe after conversing with these different people, you will change your mind about them. Maybe you will be the one to break the cycle that your grandfather and their grandfather and their grandfather before them told them that they should hate these people with a passion. At the end of this video, I'd like you to read about the third wave. It was an experimental social movement created by a California high school teacher called Ron Jones in 1967. It was to explain how the German population accepted the actions of Nazi Germany during the rise of the Third Reich and the Second World War. And that's the video. Don't be an extremist dick. Bye.